Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. And today, we're gonna to be unboxing our brand new interior for this Defender 90 build. And I'm super excited to see this because this is an S90 Hue inspired build. And so the interior is to suit that as well. But also, we're not just gonna directly copy it. We've gone for a few nice touches. So let's not waste any time, jump straight into it and unbox this package. So we should have our three-piece dash kit in here, our two front corbo seats, and two rear tumble downs, which have been retrimmed by Lucari Solutions. Let's have a look. So I don't really know what's in what box, but I, I think there's a cubby in here as well. Nice little cubby box. Wait, yeah, this is the cubby box. And a three-piece dash kit. Ooh. Very nice. We've gone for a black leather with a silver stitch to really suit and tie all this black and silver thing we've got going on. So that's like the, the dash bit. Like the, Glove boxy bit, I suppose. Speedo binnacle, really nice quality here. Nice wrapping. Cut holder. And the grab handle. Nice. Oh, it smells so good. Really nice. It's a high rise box as well. So when you're driving, your arm's going to be more at height rather than sort of like down here. Really smart. Yeah, like that. Okay. These are going to be our rear tumble downs, which are the originals to this vehicle. Ooh. These are so heavy. It always amazes me how awkward these are every time. Give us a hand with this limb. <laughs> it's so heavy. <laughs> There's just like an awkward shape. It's like lifting yeah. a transfer box. Do you want to grab a box? Pack them in there, well. Yeah. So these are gonna look absolutely amazing in this car. Ooh, look at these. What am I doing here? How do you do this again? Being a bumbling oaf, here we go. I've got it. Do you know what? I forgot what we ordered. That looks amazing. So they're packs, aren't they? They're the tumble downs. They look smart. It's a nice premium quilted bit. The silver stitch matching obviously the car. We've got the steering wheel as well. Yes. That's lovely. Really smart. I, I, told, I kind of thought that it was just like a, a regular pattern. I don't know why. The perforations remind me of like a Porsche. Yeah. And the Range Rovers have that as well. Something and the like Range Rovers. Like and the Range Rovers, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes very smart. That's quite nice, lovely. Quite a nice combo, that. That is wonderful. Do you know what? Yeah. What's the Lovely. Front? What's the front look like? Let's look at the front. Yes. I'm excited about the front. <laughs> Unwrap yours immediately. <laughs> What? They look so, so good. Heated as well. Oh, 
They are so smart. What do you think? Love them, yeah. They're incredible. Really, really good. Thoughts, Leon? They look Slightly nice. sporty style. Yeah, really sporty. Do you know who you say they're Corbos? They're Corbos, Corbos not Recaro. They're Corbo. So I find them more comfortable, if I'm honest. They look like they've got a really nice deep base on them as well. They do, yeah. Nice little biscuit base. They're really nice. Look, they've got a lot of really nice support there as well. Yeah. That's going to be great with the Stage 2 package because it means and on air for that matter. Oh, it's just a luxury vehicle, isn't it? Yeah. Especially since this one, we're going off of a £400,000 replica. That's really smart. Go have a go. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're more hugging than I thought they would be. Oh yeah, it, it's, it's, it's not you in too a bit, much. Didn't I? Yeah, they tuck you in. It's sort of like you're not on a Defender. You're rolling around along top of the seat most of the time. Especially when you're throwing it into corners and we've done all the suspension, etc. And you sort of throw it into a corner, you end up sort of resting on the armrest a bit too much. But this is really, really, really seated in a really positive feeling. Oh, I really like the combo. Smart. I, really I, like I love combo. the design of them. I, I, I've got to be honest. I can't remember ordering that. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> Very, very nice. Amazing. So guys, we get all of our interiors from Lucari Solutions or Exmoor Trim. These are from Lucari Solutions. Check them out because great quality, great service. It comes on a pallet. It's all properly packaged. It's nice. And um, well, we, let's get these installed, right? Let's look at these things in, in the proper, yeah, nice. Go on then, let's get these installed. Okay guys, so Tom is making great progress with our interior. He's carpeted over our soundproofing material. And luckily this one had, um, this was a nice carpet, right, Tom? This it's one, lovely, yeah, this one didn't, some, sometimes like the early yeah. TD5s, you pull the carpets and they rip to pieces. This one didn't turn into a mulch so we could reuse it, which is great. So we've reinstalled the carpet set and we're just in, going through to install the headliners, but we're leaving them kind of loose at the moment just to maybe run the cabling for the back um, along like that. So we just got access to that. We're just also, we don't want to, Pop, pop in our new seats just yet because we've got to do a double din conversion on this um and there's a lot of things obviously we've basically got to take off the the wiper arm here we just like to do that because you can you can kind of get a bit more access to it and pop that side panel in there this will allow us to have our modern infotainment system again this one is just bringing this vehicle back up to date um and making it fit for today's modern age uh but obviously as a side effect when we're chopping this out we're going to make a lot of mess on the floor we don't want to be working around this interior with a silver stitch and potentially dirtying it. So whilst, whilst we still have a bare interior, it now makes sense to rip into the dash. Uh, Tom's just disassembling the old factory unit. It looks like a bit of a mess right here, but obviously when it all goes back together, it all gets wired perfectly. And then we can cut open the dash here on the side panel. There's actually nothing behind there, but it is a supporting piece. So do need to be a little bit careful with that. Um, we will cut, those, cut that panel out. And then we can start installing all that. We've also got to run our light bar switch. Annoyingly, in the last episode, we didn't get our roof rack installed. So part of today is basically going to be also running the wiring down um, present so that we've got all the wiring done, all the cutting done. And then when we do come to fit the, the seats, they stay nice and clean instead of having to sort of re-clean them after. Okay, so, the, so basically with these side panels, they usually have uh, the big sort of 52 millimeter hole for a you know, rev counter or something, which some people leave blank. We like to cut them down. The later versions of these, They've started supplying more switch blanks, which is more usable, which is fantastic. Um, the only thing is, if they're not all filled out, then it looks pretty stupid unless you've got the blanks in there, but it's a little bit too much. So we're just counting how many switches we're going to require. And then what we intend to do is basically either cut that down there or down here, and we're left with this little mini switch panel, and we don't have this kind of excess look to it. Um, and a little switch panel that's sort of only, you know, that size looks a bit more factory, but basically we're going to have to modify it, cut it, paint it, um, and then we're cutting a smaller hole, but it looks a bit more factory than sort of, it looks a little bit over the top, uh, if I'm honest with that. So we like to wire up our light bars onto a genuine star switch. It looks the most factory rather than, you know, like a like a rocker switch here or something, which just obviously doesn't look, look genuine or factory. So we're gonna be fitting, this is actually, somebody else has fitted this for the rear reverse lights, which is cool. And we're also gonna be having a very similar genuine star switch, which is next to it. Um, on this panel, so it all mounts and looks factory, as factory as it could be, uh, and that's the way we'd like to do things, which is sort of OEM with a bit of a, a bit of a twist. Okay, so we've assembled the switches, and annoyingly, we're going to have to only get rid of one row because these are all the switches in the car, and obviously we're going to have one extra for our light bar and then a blank, but we won't be needing those two, and 
this car is fully spec, so I can't imagine there's gonna be anything added to it in future. So we're gonna make the executive decision here to chop off the lower two tabs. And I've done it multiple times, but we're gonna watch Tom do it. And I've made him think for himself how we're gonna do this and how he's gonna modify. And what are you gonna to use, Tom? A uh, little disc cutter and then just sand it off or file it off. Just and you're gonna get the, the rounded edges and everything. Yep. I'm gonna give it a repaint, yeah? Certainly are. Great stuff. So let's uh, take the switches out. Good stuff. And let's, let's uh, follow the process. Okay guys, so we're just installing our infotainment system and we've got to build up our double din fascia. And that means basically mounting our stereo. We've gone for a, a Pioneer DA130. Um, we've used a number of, of uh, stereos in the past, Alpines, Pioneers, etc. Um, I just fell in love with this one with the capability. It looks modern, it's the latest version. It connects with Android, Apple CarPlay, DAB, Bluetooth, etc. Does everything you'd want and for a pretty good price. So uh, we're gonna install this into the frame. Okay guys, so we've got our, our new double din infotainment system mounted. We've got our reverse camera at the back. And previously we had this, uh, this RAM mount out here with like a little screen and it just didn't look very factory. So we always like to do a double din installation, do it all properly. We've mounted that shorty panel on the side. It's looking absolutely perfect. We've just got our high rose cubby box and Tom has mounted the subwoofer that was originally in the car to the back. We flipped it around because it was a bit backwards before. Um, and it's mounted nice and low down there. Now, Zach at the back here, where someone had mounted the reverse camera previously, there was a there was two big holes up here and then one giant hole just there um, where they had all the wiring running through and a big grommet, but it didn't look factory at all. So we've called Zach out. Um, Zach is our mobile painter. He's really good, that's why we use him. And he's basically completely blanked out these holes. How have you done it, Zach? Because that is really so, good. Put a little bit of fiberglass in it to seal it, a little bit of filler over the top, uh, some UV primer. So this is primer that won't sink. It's cured by UV, it's high tech and it's fancy. Um, and then we'll just paint this back section here. Looking really nice. And we can't just do that little section. No, we have to do the whole thing. So there's no paint edges or anything. It run a little soft edge, bit of foam around here. So you'll never know. Looking really good. So we're gonna basically, this will be, we've completely repaired the panel 
and we'll have a very factory install with the proper high-tech camera because before it had this like weird shop camera or something it didn't look very nice and it kind of stood out and again like I said it had all the wiring running through it must have been like a two pence piece or something the size of that mm. grommet that was there it just it just didn't look it looked quite DIY so we've called Zach out he's done their serial repairs and that's absolutely perfect so he's gonna blow that in now and whilst Zach is doing that so he's gonna be outside around the back doing his smart repairs whilst uh, Zach is doing his repairs uh, me and Tom are gonna assemble the roof rack and the ladder assembly so that by the time that Zach is finished with this, we can then finish, we can finish off of the roof section, bolt on a roof rack, fit our light bar, and then we can finally fit those seats. And then it's not very far away. We can put our branding on the front and see, what, see what's left to do. So uh, let's get cracking. What do you think of the roof rack then and the light bar? I quite like it, the light bar suits it. Roof rack? It looks... I think it makes... suits more of the adventure that we're going for. It definitely ties in well with it, especially it, it, like the black and... Black I think it ties black. in with the tyres and the grill and the checker plate especially actually. It brings yeah. the image together without the checker... If the checker plate wasn't there I'd say it don't look, do it. It would look a bit, a bit much. But it looks really but do you clean. Know what, and... I'm really glad there's no checker on the bottom. Yeah. Because that yeah. would make it look completely different. I'm rooting it for it. Pretty, it. Smart. I'm rooting for it, definitely. Very smart. Done good. Let's get the seats in. Yeah, let's do it. I really want to see them seats in. Oh, yeah, same, <laughs> same, <laughs> definitely. <laughs>
So this is probably my most favorite part of this build, only because this steering wheel, I think is actually one of the most expensive on the market and it's gonna suit this interior perfectly. I'm just really hoping that they've sent us the right uh, steering wheel, basically. Tom's never seen this steering wheel and it's a StarTech silver stitch. And these things are pricey. Very smart. Silver stitch, StarTech steering wheel. Very nice indeed. Wrong spline. I don't, I don't get it. Why? How is it that difficult? There's always something. We'll order the part and they just cannot get it right. It's so frustrating. I mean, the steering wheel looks incredible and it would just be the case of the boss. But it's not, it can't be that, it can't be that difficult to just read an order. The steering wheel suits perfectly, so I'm really happy with the steering wheel. And it would just be a case of them sending out a boss. Still frustrating. So frustrating. Mm. And more delay and faffing on our part as well. Mm. So frustrating the steering wheel isn't right. The steering wheel's perfect, but the boss is wrong. We've got a, a later spline for an earlier steering column here, but it's not a problem. I'll give them a call tomorrow and I'll get one sent up next day. So happy with the way this interior is looking. It's totally different to what actually came in. The, the whole vehicle is totally transformed. The interior is fresher, brighter, more modern, definitely more valuable. You get the feeling you're sitting in here, you're in a premium car. I do need to put the seat back though. That's it. Really nice premium materials here, premium car. We, that, I didn't even actually show actually, I forgot to show you guys, but Tom and Leon sneakily installed a short shifter off camera. And basically what that does is just shorten the throw. Typical with defenders, obviously you're gonna have a long sort of selection path and you end up sometimes punching the radio. Um, this basically just gives it a shorter throw, gives it a sportier, more modern, and um, just an overall updated feel to the gearbox. It doesn't make it any stiffer, it just allows for a tighter selection, which is obviously just aiding to this refinement and modernizing this car. This steering wheel is a really nice size. I believe this is 350 mil, which I personally think is the best size for these vehicles. You get more, more leg room, more knee room. You can still see the whole clocks. You know, it's not too small where you're sort of driving a little go-kart and it's not too big. Like the original, you're driving like a bus around the block. You can still access all the panels, all the, all the steering controls. This shorty panel on the side looks absolutely wonderful. So Tom, thank you for that. You've done a great job on that. That looks amazing. The double din is just a very nice infotainment system. It powers up. We've got the reverse camera hooked in as well. So it automatically engages on the reverse. So if I put the clutch down, select reverse, you're not going to see much. You can see the masking tape. Leon, can you give the camera a wiggle at the back? Of course. Oh, no. I know it's taped up. I know it's taped up. Just move it. Hang on a second. I think he's untaping it. What is that? Is that a parking sensor? Yeah, sorry, asked me to stand right in front of it. There you go. There you go. Oh. Hello. Give us a wave. Turn upside down. You got upside down. So that's reverse, and it automatically jumps out of reverse. It's got all the Apple CarPlay, the DAB radio. We had um, one of those stick on aerials on the top windscreen. We've removed that and wired it in direct to the, um, to the factory radio, uh, into the factory aerial. We think that allows for a cleaner installation. It's very uh, Land Rover esque, if that makes sense. There's nothing in sight that would show that this vehicle has got anything aftermarket in that sense. Um, Tom totally rewired the speakers. Somebody had fitted the, the focals in previously. That's also what we installed as well as the Alphines. There's no need to replace those, but Tom was frustrated with the, the amp and the, the sub wiring. So he's completely overhauled the, the wiring to this car and put it all underneath the driver's seat here. So you cannot, cannot see it. And it's just wonderful, this interior. It's really opened up the cabin. The sunroof just allows that extra light. You just feel like you're driving a premium car here. And I'm certain that we certainly, I'm certain that we certainly, I'm confident we've lifted the price tag of this vehicle significantly just because of the equipment, the choices of materials, and the, you know, just the selection of what we've done to this vehicle. I don't think you'll see another Silver 90 which meets this specification on the road. And um, 
we're thrilled with it. We've left this seat out because the battery's dead. So, um, and it won't really hold charge. So we've got a new one arriving tomorrow and there's no point bolting these ones in because these ones don't have the liftable bases. So we left that one out. We're gonna have a bit of a tidy up. It is late, it's approaching, oh, it is eight o'clock. And uh, we'll catch you guys bright and early in the morning. Okay guys, so it's the next morning and this could be the last day we're gonna work on this vehicle actually. Uh, Tom's just got to do a bit of soldering up on this light bar connection. Uh, Tom's also going to give it a full service. We're still waiting for that battery. It should be here any moment now. Um, and then we're going to go around, put the branding package on, and then we can take it outside, give this thing a road test. And I think we'll be done with it, you know? We've, we've not got much left. So it, we're in the final stages now. We just want to make sure this thing is obviously got fresh oils all throughout because we've done a lot of work to it. And then we can take this thing on the road and see how it feels. Um, give it a wash as well because it's it gets, do you know what it's so dusty in here i don't know how it happens every vehicle that ends up in here for more than a week or two ends up with this film of dust so take it down the farm get it washed and have a look around it and see what we've done so uh i'll put some on it and get him to do that full service Okay guys, small technical issue with the file here. It got deleted or moved or something, but uh, we're back on the farm. We're gonna be washing this thing and making this thing look absolutely perfect because the vehicle is finally finished.
Okay guys, so on this beautiful summer's day, we finished it and it's been a really fun build this one. And I mean, just look at it. We think it looks absolutely wonderful. Tell us what you guys think in the comment section. We think we nailed this S90 Hue conversion, if you will. And like I said, I've said it many times, I don't like self defenders, but this one, something else. I'll let the pictures do the talking, but we had a lot of fun with this one. It's got some real premium kit on it. It's brought up to a modern day and age, modern suspension, modern braking, modern power upgrade, modern interior, modern seating, modern infotainment system, cameras on the back, just all round, really, really smart, really nice. Nice and quiet inside as well, being a soundproof defender. Tom's done some audio upgrades, nice light bar. What a machine, I think it looks absolutely wonderful. And the plate as well, huge plate already. So it kind of led itself already, but considering what we started with, it just looked a bit too confusing the front end. It looked like it was a bit of a mishmash of ideas and designs, wasn't too structured, but we just simplified everything. And uh, I think we've really pulled this one off. The aluminium steering guard that Zach painted, it does look like aluminium. The front end is so simple, really, really nice. And I'll show you the suspension actually. So this is access. So we go up into road height. So we dropped it in the end about an inch and a half. And we think that sits perfectly. And then obviously we can drop it down again into access mode. Hear the press it, compressor kicking in, bring it up into normal. And when you take the, when you take the handbrake off, it'll automatically bring itself up into the road height. But uh, you can cruise around an access, but I wouldn't want to go too fast just because the bump stops are close. So bottom out. In terms of a road going defender, or in fact, slight bumping around off road, you know, if you're going to take this thing abroad, something like that, and you need to get onto a campsite, this is the ultimate suspension kit. And obviously, going at speed, and there's something that, you know, hazard in front, you can slam on the anchors, it will stop. Modern tyres, they're bigger tyres as well, a lot more contact with the road. It just looks wonderful. I really love this one. There's just something about it, and I think it's all the subtlety of the design. Very Land Rover. Annoyingly, this, this boss didn't arrive. They sent another one and it was wrong again. But um, the customers here are very happy with what we've done. And we're, we're, so, ex we're so ecstatic with what we've, did, with what we've done with this car. Annoyingly, we couldn't take it out. We sort of pushed for time a little bit, but we couldn't go and have a bit of fun with it and get some nice shots. But I'm sure we just won't be the last for seeing it. It uh, does look the part. <laughs> does look so cool. <laughs> it's one of those builds, I just think you'd know. Immediately, this thing's been built correctly. Okay guys, so this steering wheel actually did just arrive, just as the customer's collecting. And we've got the quick release boss on there. It just finishes this interior. It's looking absolutely beautiful. Sun's coming through the, the sunroof. 
those seats really do it justice. It just adds a bit of premium feel to this vehicle, which is pretty unheard of in a Defender, but really happy with the result on this one.